Hello everyone, Credible Hulk here. I am finally getting around to shooting the rig episode. It's the episode that I've actually played while I was on Christmas break and New Year's break and I built, I remodeled the old base, jacked it up, put wheels on it, and made it mobile so that I could drive around and mine minerals without having to do too much work. Uh, everything that I built, you, if you've been playing along with us, you should be able to build. Um, if you can't build it as big as I have, you should be able to build a smaller scale version to be able to gather the resources to finally be able to build this, the size that I have built. Uh, the reason how come I say that is because in one of the other episodes that I was while I was filming it, I died. But I had turned off the, uh, I had turned off the med pack, so I had to respawn in a drop ship. So that means I had two drop ships to be able to gather resources from instead of just the one. And it was really difficult to find because when I respawned, I spawned in the upper atmosphere, and I had to turn on my GPS locator and fly all the way where I was and it took about an hour to fly because of how far away I, I had spawned but anyway so that's a recap of a little bit of of what happened as to how come I have a, a more resources the other part is the fact that I was able to build such a large drilling rig and move it around and start gathering resources I had started off with a 3x3 three three mobile rig and then I've went, I, I expanded to a 5x5 five five mobile rig, and now this one is a 7x7 seven seven mobile rig that it continuously got taller and taller. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of a tour of the rig and uh, conclude this episode. And then after this episode, the next episode should be our first shuttlecraft to get us from the planet surface to space. So. Without further ado, I'm going to show you the rig. Um, so this is the top of the drilling rig platform. We have the solar panels that we use to gather our, our power. And as you can see, it's on the standard rotor facing the sun right now. I still don't have sun rotation on. I played with it a little bit. Um, there's a couple of pock marks on the ground that you can see where I've done some mining. And you can look down and see the scale of, of how tall this sucker is. And you can see a couple of small pock marks where those freaking cyber hounds came and, and screwed my world up a little bit. But you can see where we mined down. And uh, well, anyway, so I'm standing on the cockpit. You can see the flight, the flight control deck right there. And we have our batteries built around our, our solar panel. Uh, rotor like I've showed you before they're all fully charged right now and they're turned off because we still have a little bit of power in these backup batteries that we're draining but our solar panels are producing enough battery power that it's able to charge everything or enough power to be able to charge the batteries without having to worry about it on the very very bottom you can see down through the scaffolding that we have uh, we have our rig down there we're gonna get to the rig head in a minute but right now I'm gonna show you that we have all of these pistons going up to a small cargo container that is our mining material preview the reason why it previews the mining material is because when it while, while the rigs digging the everything that it, it gets will come up into here and you can see it go into the cargo container but because of the conveyor sorter right here it's gonna pull it out and send it down the chute so it's gonna pause here for us to do a little preview window and it's gonna shoot down um, I don't know if I've covered I don't think I have covered conveyor sorters yet but a conveyor sorter basically just see that you can see the direction of the arrow you have their settings inside of the sorter that lets you choose what type of materials you want to be able to go through it like a filter and it takes anything behind it 
sorts or just if it's within the filter parameters it pulls it out and sends it down the line and these settings are you could set it to drain all or off so it acts as a passive filter so if you're manually moving stuff through your inventory it lets you pull what you want and not pull what you don't want or you could set it to drain all which it acts like the connectors do which I have it set to drain all Filter mode is blacklist or whitelist. Blacklist means anything inside of the filter cannot get through, and whitelist means only the things in the active filters here can get through. And here are the filter parameters. These are all pre-programmed. You can't, you, you cannot add any new th things to them. But this is the programmers have set like ammo, components, hand tools, ingots, and ore. Those are just general terms or being anything that you mine out of the ground and gets being processed or hand tools being anything that your engineer holds in its hand the components being the things that you have to have to be able to build your different parts and ammo being like uh, bullets bullet clips munitions and stuff like that or you can go through and find the specific items that you want to be able to put through the filter instead of those generic terms and you just add and remove whatever you want to your filter and instead of clicking individually you can also shift click and then drag and alt click to pick certain ones you just click to remove oh we're gonna leave it that the way it is right now that way it continuously pulls and feeds through down our assembly line which as you can see runs all the way down into our processing plant I'm gonna go down my little ladder here. I mean, oh yes, I'm sorry. I'm gonna show you the cockpit. This is the cockpit. You can see I, I've enclosed it in uh, windows and give it a little. I think it's interesting the way that it's constructed because you have that little. This is the support beam, and then it comes down to hold the cockpit up. So the glass is actually supported by this. So, have a little preview. I like it. I like the way the cockpit's set up. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and go down the rig some more. And whenever you see an area open like this, it opens into a little bit of a catwalk. So, keep going down, catwalk, okay right here we've hit the very top of the rig head, the drill, the drill head. I just went ahead and locked that in place. I'll show you why it needs to lock here in a minute. But and again, you can see where we've drilled continuous holes. But anyway, this uh, these uh, collapsible bridges are here. That way, we can lower the uh, lower the drill head. We can lower the drill head. And then once that one area, once it lowers, it should stop right where. Oh, yeah, that's right. I need another one. Should get down just far enough. Yep, oh, I messed up. I messed up. Drill platform piston. This needs to be 7.7. I need two drills to the two pistons to catch up to each other. 
Right now I'm shooting live, which I normally don't do, but that way my voice and what I'm doing are caught up with one another. Because when I was doing the voiceovers, it wasn't in sync. I was having to recap of what I just did. And never mind, that made me out to be a liar, so... Anyway, this is you're supposed to be able to make the distance of one of the pistons short enough to where it stops right at the ice level and you can extend the bridge and you can drive vehicles up on it. That's the whole point is that you can drive vehicles up on it. But it's not working out for me. Anyway, that's what the purpose of that was, even though it's not working right now because I, I, I changed the settings around too much. But we have this flat area for us to be able to drive vehicles on and off of. And then we'll go down to the next part of the drill, which is the top of the drill. The, uh, opposite side of the drill heads themselves and this little parking area is supposed to be so that you can drive vehicles on and off it but there's no uh, there's no way for me to attach the collapsible bridges here so I haven't really developed that too much the reason why it's also like this is so that I could build a uh, I could put pistons on this side that's why it's so far away I could put a piston which takes two and then a drill head which takes three so the drill head would be right here, and then I can start. Ex I could turn the drills on and push the pistons to expand, and it'll drill into the side, not just straight up and down, to where it can create uh, mining layers, mining levels, different flooring, and that's that's the reason why it's built like this. And as you can see, it's a seven by seven drill. But finally we get, it, it sends all the ore up, the ore comes down, goes into this conveyor. The conveyor will send the ore through this assembler. The assembler will put it through the assembler on the other side of it. And that assembler will put the ore then into this cargo container. The reason why I'm saying it's getting pushed that way is because don't forget we have the conveyor sorter up top that's continuously pushing the ore through and it's going to follow the path all the way to the next cargo container because the ore will not stop inside of the assemblers but it will continue it will, it will continue the, the chain so then the ore gets pushed into this cargo container which then uses this conveyor sorter excuse me just one second which then uses this conveyor sorter to pull the ore which is why it's called the ore puller and it has all of the different ore labeled except for the it has all the different ore individually labeled because I like to remove the ice sometimes because I don't I, 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 I that way I can keep the ice isolated but we have the ore that gets pushed up into this one, into this container. And then this cargo container takes the ore and pushes it, through, or lets it get pulled into our refinery here and our refinery on top. So that the ore is getting processed. And then, once the ore is processed... It will let you, it, it will let it get fed back into the main cargo this cargo container, which then uses this conveyor sorter as the return valve. And the only thing it lets through is ingots, component, hand tools, and ammo. It doesn't let ore through. So if the ore is not processed, it won't go through. But the ingots will get sucked through. 
and then the ingots end up in here which in turn because the assemblers are attached will let the ingots flow through to the assemblers and then let let you build your components which can go back and forth between this car this cargo right here okay so that's that's the supply chain in the cargo containers and processing plant we then this this cargo container holds all of the ore which also includes the stone and since we have over a million gravel not not just stone but a million gravel we have this convenient conveyor sorter right here that the only purpose that this does it whitelists which means this is the only thing that can get through is stone and it drains it so it sucks all the stone out and throws it into these connectors and the connectors are all set to throw out and collect all so this filter only lets stone through and it pushes the stone through these all suck the stone and then spit them out down here into all of these which is why we have a bunch of rocks sitting around down here that way we don't have build up of excess stone okay and then we have attached to trying to find where my okay, here's this I think it's attached so this is this is my oxygen generator I believe it's connected to a connector we have a connector right here and then we have that's an oxygen bottle right there let's see if I can get a better shot of it okay, there's the oxygen bottle there's the other assembler yep there's the other assembler and then we have a connector for conveyor and the conveyor is also connected to this oxygen bottle That way our oxygen generator can process the ice and turn it into hydrogen. We don't need it to turn it into oxygen because we have this air vent to suck the oxygen out of the uh, atmosphere. And we have this hydrogen bottle is connected with the... This is... No, maybe it's the back one. I think the back one might be... No, this one. This one. This one's connected. This hydrogen bottle's connected to the conveyor right there. So that way it can... This hydrogen bottle can get filled with the hydrogen from the oxygen generator. And the other... That, which connects everything. So that this... Isolated cargo container will pull ice. That way I have a reserve ice storage. Drain all is turned on whitelist ice. So this only pulls ice into this cargo container. We have three hydrogen bottles. That way we can have an abundance of hydrogen because once we start we're going to build a, uh, a landing pad up here that we're going to build our, our space shuttle with and we're going to use hydrogen as a primary power to get in and out of the atmosphere and if you're wondering how I was able to get this base built like this most of this is the original like the the flat part most of this is the original base just remodeled a little bit and the way that I did that was I just built s stuff like this where, where it's one block up and a block over and then I just attached uh, I attached pi a piston to it like this and just built stilts 
and I put still I put uh, pistons on all four sides of it. That way it jacked it up, and then once it was jacked up, I was able to put the wheels on it. This right here is another parking garage. It's got the little flashers to notify you, of, hey, this is. So. Oh, I'm lifting it up accidentally. I accidentally lifted the whole base up with that one piston. But yeah, you can see that the tires are off the ground. So that's how I did it, was by building a piston like that, jacking everything up. But we'll go ahead and we'll put the tires back on the ground by... I offset. No, the tires are off the ground. Okay. And that's the rig, man. That is the rig. Now I'm going to show you... Oh yeah, there's a... Uh... There's your ore detector. I'll show you how to use it. And then we will complete this video. So you're in your rig. Pilot in your rig like this. I hit tab so I can see what's going on. As you can see on the bottom of the screen, the hotkeys, we have a camera, we have a drill bit, we have an ore detector, ro the rotator for the solar panel. We have, that's a group piston. That's not just a single piston, but it's the entire piston chain that is the drill press. And we have the one landing gear that's locking the drill press into place we're gonna do a view out so that we can see and I'm gonna show you here as you can see the uh, landing gears not locked at least it wasn't until I just hit that freaking button okay landing gears not locked we're gonna go ahead and start rolling forward and you're gonna see you see how the drills starting to bounce around Which is why we have that landing gear there so that we can lock it into place. We can roll without it bouncing and hitting anything. See how it's now frozen in place? I need to make sure not to put my wheels in a hole. So, anyway, so we, we roll our drill press into an area that we want to mine like this press the button to set the brakes I went ahead and I'm pressing 5 to make sure that my drill is completely pressed in and then you can just turn on the drills from here you don't even have to get out of the cockpit shift 2 hit 1 to look in the camera that we have built there and then we can just start drilling we can look in our inventory at the key view and see what we're hitting One of the previously recordings that I had made, because this is the third or fourth time I've tried to record this episode, one of the times that I recorded it, I had gotten 350,000 uh, uranium ore. Which is how come I have... 
500,000 right here. But as you can see, the number is continuously going up, but it's going down at the same time because we're still, it's still pulling it. But every once in a while, it, it doesn't pull it fast enough, so we have to manually move it out to keep our preview going. And you can see in the background right here, the eye slowly moving. And once you notice that it's it's not moving or you, this number's not going up as fast, that's when you can click over. You can also just sit here and watch it like this and just press the, the different pistons in order because if they should, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of the actual drill press pistons are here. If you want to go that extra mile, once all of those are pressed, you can, you can, you can switch this one because this one does lower the boom some more. Oh, there we go. We hit stone and we hit iron. Man. Oh, because it's full. Holy crap. Oh, it's full of ice. So you know what that means. See how it's full? We need to go to... Which is why we have that backup ice. Because we have over 8 million ice right there. But that's it, man. This is this is how we gather our resources to be able to build our spaceships. We go big. Go big or go home. That's what I always say. But this has been incredible. Hulk, please like, share, subscribe. Throw me an email. Like us on Facebook. Send me a suggestion. Whatever you want to do. Please, by all means, do it. Um, if you have any suggestions or you want to maybe see yourself in a video, I am thinking about... And I'm not thinking, I'm wanting to do some group let's play. So if you want, just hit me up and uh, we'll see. Oh, finally I can get rid of these. Nope, still not fully depleted. That sucks. Anyway, like, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the next video should be uh, in development soon. We're going to try to build a uh, space dock right here. That way we could start shuttling materials up into outer space because we want to go exploring. Anyway, see you guys later.